Okay, let's say you want to redo your bedroom. So you go to the store and you find a bed for $423, a lamp for $88, a bookshelf for $107, a dresser for $198, and window treatments for $203. Okay, well, let's say you have a certain amount of money and you want to know if you have enough money. So let's say you have $1,000. Well, you're probably not going to add each one of these. You're probably not going to have a pen and pad or a handy. You're probably going to want to round this. The whole idea of rounding and estimating is that so that you can do all these operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, quite quickly. So let me show you how to round. Okay. So let's, let's take the number 43. And let's round that to the nearest 10. What we're really asking by rounding that to the nearest 10 is we're really saying, is your number closer to 40 or is it closer to 50? That's what we're really asking you. Now, it's probably easier to tell that obviously your number is closer to 40, but when the numbers get bigger, there's got to be an actual way to do this, an actual procedure. So let me show you that procedure. So I'm going to start with this number 43. And again, we want to round it to the nearest 10. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to understand that we're rounding to the nearest 10, so I'm going to underline the spot I want to round to, the place I want to round to. So the 4 is in the 10's place. Then I'm going to look at the number to its immediate right. So I'm looking at this number. If that number is a 5 or higher, we're going to raise that up by 1. If that number is not a 5 or higher, we're going to leave it alone. And then we're going to make all the other digits zeros. So I look at this number. It's not a 5 or higher. So we're going to leave the 4 alone. We're not going to do anything to the 4. So this becomes 4, that stays, and then where you saw the 3, we just put a 0. So again, we notice that it's closer to the 40, because 43 is closer to 40 because I looked at this number, and it's not a 5 or higher, so I left this alone. And that's all there is to rounding. So if you would take a second to just do the other two problems in your workbook, and then we'll come back and show you if you got your answers right. Okay, let's see how you did on those two. Let's take the seven, 748. We want that to the nearest 100. So we have to go to the hundreds place. So I'll go to the hundreds place, and that's the 7. I'll underline it, and then I'll go to the right of that number, and I'll look to see if it's a 5 or higher. Now, don't look at the 8. The 8 has nothing to do with this in rounding. You just go to the number to its immediate right. And I look at the 4, and since that's not a 5 or higher, that 4, um, that 4 tells me to leave the 7 alone, so it becomes 700, okay, because you make the rest zeros. Because again, this is really asking me, is this number closer to 700, or is it closer to 800? Because you want it to the nearest 100, okay? So the answer there is 700. Okay, let's do the last example. The last example is 29,844, and we want that to the nearest 1,000. OK, so we have to go to the thousands place, and the thousands place is right here. OK, I look at the number to its immediate right, and I see that I have to add 1 because that is a 5 or higher. Well, notice. 29, if I add 1, I'm just really going to change 29 to 30 because I can't really, if I change the 9 to a 0, that doesn't make sense. So that 29 is going to become 30, so it's 30,000. Because again, what this is really asking me, since it's to the nearest 1,000, is, is this number closest to 29,000 or 30,000? Notice it's between that, those two numbers, but we want to know which one it's closest to, and it's closest to 30,000. So that's how you round. And being able to round will allow us to do a lot of problems very quickly. And that's it for rounding and estimating. The next thing we do is multiplication of whole numbers.